Today, you're learning English with Iron Man. Ah, oh, yeah. So, did you know that Iron Man was actually the first movie in the Marvel Universe? Well, in today's scene, you're going to learn some really great English for speech giving with Tony Stark and Pepper. Plus, you will also be learning a bit of grammar and how to properly use the active and passive voice in English. By the way, if you're new here, every single week we make fun lessons to help you understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like SD, who says that in just a week of watching our lessons, he can already see improvements in his listening. And you're going to improve your English a ton too. Just hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. Now, let's jump into the Marvel Universe with Iron Man. You've all received the official statement of what occurred at Stark Industries last night. There have been unconfirmed reports that a robotic prototype malfunctioned and caused damage to the arc reactor. Fortunately, a member of Tony Stark's personal... Iron Man, that's kind of catchy. It's got a nice ring to it. I mean, it's not technically accurate. This suit's a gold titanium alloy, but it's kind of evocative, the imagery, anyway. Here's your alibi. Okay. You were on your yacht. Yeah. We have port papers to put you in Avalon all night and sworn statements from 50 of your guests. See, I was thinking maybe we should say it was just, uh, just Pepper and me alone on the island. That's what happened. All right. Just read it word for word. There's nothing about staying here. That's being handled. He's on vacation. Small aircraft have such a poor safety record. But what about the whole cover story that it's a bodyguard? He's my body? I mean, is that, that's kind of flimsy, don't you think? This isn't my first rodeo, Mr. Stark. Just stick to the official statement and soon this will all be behind you. So, you know, if I were Iron Man, I'd have this girlfriend who knew my true identity. She'd be a wreck. She'd always be worrying that I was gonna die, yet sort of proud of the man I'd become. She'd be wildly conflicted, which would only make her more <clears throat> crazy about me. Tell me you never think. There have been unconfirmed reports that a robotic prototype malfunctioned. A report is a piece of information that a person or group of people have observed, heard, done, or investigated. Okay, it's O. We have reports of several humans suffering from intestinal worms of alien origin. Thank you, O. When we say something like, there have been some reports, we imply that there's no firm evidence that proves said reports are true yet. That's why he says unconfirmed reports in this sentence. Also, let's take a look at the structure of this sentence. Have you ever heard of the passive voice in English? To say that in the active voice, we'd have to know who made those reports, or maybe we could be vague and say something like, some people have reported that. If we say that, we're putting emphasis on who did the action. What the passive voice allows us to do is shift the emphasis from the subject in active voice to something else by starting the sentence in a different way. If we put the emphasis on the object report, we get reports have been made. In this sentence from the scene, the emphasis is put on the verb to be. This means they're putting the emphasis on the fact that the reports exist or have emerged. Hence the there is. In addition, one of the main reasons for the passive voice is to avoid specifying who did the action because it is obvious or it is unimportant. In this case, we do not care who made the reports, but rather we focus on the fact that the reports have emerged. There have been unconfirmed reports that a robotic prototype malfunctioned. A prototype is a new type of machine or device which is not yet ready to be made in large numbers and sold. The mysterious device damaged Iron Man's arc reactor and caused it to malfunction. When something malfunctions, it doesn't work properly. If you've got problems with malfunctioning equipment, I suggest you take them up with maintenance counselor. Iron Man, that's kind of catchy. It's got a nice ring to it. I mean... As the first movie of the Marvel Universe, it's funny to see here how the name Iron Man came about. Tony's first reaction to it is saying that it's catchy. We often say that a song or a name is catchy meaning it's attractive and easy to remember. You could describe modern pop music as catchy. When we say this, we can also mean that it's addictive. It sticks in your head. Then he says that the name has a nice ring to it. This just means that it is a pleasant name. 
it is auditorily pleasant. Example, Musk said that the name Tesla had a nice ring to it for a car company. I mean, it's not technically accurate to see it's a gold titanium alloy, but it's kind of evocative the imagery anyway. An alloy is a combination of metals. In this case, the Iron Man suit is a combination of gold and titanium. So, in fact, it's not really iron. That's why he says the name has a nice ring to it. The name Gold Titanium Alloy Man would of course sound ridiculous. Evocative means bringing thoughts, memories, or feelings into mind. The name Iron Man evokes a sense that the superhero is made of solid, strong material. The name Iron Man is a metaphor because it is not really made of iron. We often describe metaphors as evocative. All I know is that I'm a ticking time bomb, and if I don't do something for me right away, I swear I'm gonna explode. Wow, that's an evocative metaphor to use for your non-threatening, totally patriotic emotions. According to Tony, the name Iron Man has an evocative imagery. This is what you could say to describe a set of images, real or imagined, that have a specific purpose or effect. For example, if I asked you, what's the imagery that comes to your mind when I say New York? It could probably be something like this. Here's your alibi. Okay. You were on your yacht. This is a claim that you cannot be guilty of a crime because you were somewhere else when the crime was committed. Tony's alibi states that he was on his yacht, not really fighting Stain, which, by the way, is what really happened. We have court papers to put you in Avalon all night and sworn statements from 50 of your guests. The agent here is describing further details about Tony's alibi. He's letting him know that he should say that he was in Avalon, an island. To prove this, he's giving him paperwork, admittedly fake, and sworn statements. A sworn statement is a legal document that states facts or lists statements that are relevant to a legal proceeding or court case. There's nothing about staying here. That's being handled. He's on vacation. Small aircraft have such a poor safety record. Stain is Tony's enemy. The agent is suggesting that part of the cover story, meaning a fake story that's intended to hide true events, is that Stain died in a plane accident. That's why he says the part about Stain in the story is being handled. This means that there's a solution for the inconsistency that the cover story could have because of him. I didn't tell him anything. Nothing. No. Should have pressed the panic button. Well, I panicked, but then I handled it. In relation to this, he says that small aircraft have a poor safety record. Poor is an adjective we can use to describe something as not good in quality, not skilled, or bad, depending on what we're describing. In this case, small aircraft have a poor safety record, meaning they are known to be unsafe. The story of Captain America is one of honor bravery, and sacrifice. Denied enlistment due to poor health, Stephen Rogers was chosen for a program unique in the annals of American warfare. Oh, sure, you just take off your little mask and show us all who you really are. Hmm? <laughs> Let her go. Very poor choice of words. <laughs> What about the whole cover story that it's a bodyguard? In more details about the cover story, we learn that Iron Man is supposed to be Tony's bodyguard. That's kind of flimsy, don't you think? This isn't my first rodeo, Mr. Stark. Just stick to the official statement and soon this will all be behind you. If you describe a structure of some kind as flimsy, you mean that it's easily broken, torn, etc. Not strong or solid. For example, a flimsy building. By extension, if a story, excuse, etc. is flimsy, it is not likely to be believed. Later in the scene, it becomes evident why this was a flimsy cover-up. I'm sorry, so, Mr. Stark, but do you honestly expect us to believe that that was a bodyguard in a suit? This isn't my first rodeo, Mr. Stark. Just stick to the official statement and soon this will all be behind you. This is just a fairly common expression. By, this isn't my first rodeo, He's saying that he's experienced with the type of situation that they're dealing with here. Example, when you travel with me, you don't have to worry. This isn't my first rodeo. I've traveled all around the world. He recommends he sticks to the official statement. To stick to something means to continue to do or use one particular thing and not change it. In this case, he shouldn't say anything that isn't in the statement they've created. 
If we say, let's stick to the plan, we mean that we will continue following the plan. And down. Uh, Ladies with them. We stick to the plan. Then he uses the word behind. If an unpleasant experience or situation is behind you, it no longer upsets you or affects your life. You know, if I were Iron Man, I'd have this girlfriend who knew my true identity. She'd be a wreck. She'd always be worrying that I was going to die. It's sort of proud. A wreck usually refers to a car, plane, or train that has been damaged very badly, especially in a crash. But when it's used to refer to a person, it describes someone who is very nervous, tired, or unhealthy. Yep, add mouth catching to the list of things she can't do. No, I mean, she's not nervous at all, and look at the other kids, they're a wreck. As a verb, to wreck means to destroy. My body literally cannot handle the stress. I never know if you're gonna kill yourself or, or, or wreck the whole company I just, or... I think I did okay. <sighs> you might also hear the collocation, check yourself before you wreck yourself. This is used to threaten someone, sometimes jokingly, who is acting in a foolish way. Wait, are you stalking, Selena? Stalking's such an ugly word. Parachuting into somebody's backyard? It's like kind of psycho, bro. You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Does that mean you don't want to press charges? Nah, just get him off my property ASAP. The man I'd become, she'd be wildly conflicted, which would only make her more. If you feel conflicted about something, you have feelings that disagree with one another. I never got to say goodbye to my father. There's questions that I would ask him. I would ask him how he felt about what this company did. If he was conflicted, if he ever had doubts. Wildly, in this case, is the adverb that can collocate with the adjective conflicted, intensifying its meaning. And now Mr. Stark has prepared a statement. He will not be taking any questions. Thank you. Uh, been a while since I was in front of you. I figure I'll stick to the cards this time. <laughs> <clears throat> There's been speculation that I was involved in the events that occurred on the freeway and the rooftop. I'm sorry, so Mr. Stark, but do you honestly expect us to believe that that was a bodyguard in a suit that conveniently appeared, despite the fact that... I know that it's confusing. It is one thing to question the official story and another thing entirely to make wild accusations or insinuate that I'm uh, a superhero. I never said you were a superhero. Didn't? Mm -mm. Well, good, because that would be outlandish and uh, fantastic. I, I, I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly, with this uh, laundry list of character defects, all the mistakes I've made, largely public. Yeah. Truth is, I am Iron Man. And now Mr. Stark has prepared a statement. He will not be taking any questions. Thank you. Take in this case means accept. Many times in press conferences, the speaker is not willing to take any questions. Let's now take a look at some pronunciation. How would you say the following sentence? Did you say it like this? Uh, been a while since I was in front of you. I figure I'll stick to the cards this time. <laughs> Let's try to imitate him. He says his sentence in three chunks. You say this as if it were a three syllable word. Been a while. Mr. Wallow, it's, it's been a while. Here, it's important you get the pronunciation of was right. So don't say was, say was. For, um, well, since I was 14. Here, the T gets absorbed by the N in front, and then it links with of. This is said as another three-syllable word, front of you. But the, the person for the job is right in front of you. Just worry about the dog in front of you. Now let's put the whole sentence together. Been a while since I was in front of you. We've asked the members of our Fluency Circle community to pronounce this sentence. Check out how they do it. Been a while since I was in front of you. Been a while since I was in front of you. Been a while since I was in front of you. Been a while since I was in front of you. Been a while since I was in front of you. Been a while since I was in front of you. Been a while since I was in front of you. 
Would you like to join our global community of English learners, the Fluency Circle? Well, then I highly recommend you join our Fluent with Friends course. Every week for 48 weeks, you will get an exclusive lesson following along with the first two seasons of the series Friends. Plus, you get 20 plus page PDF power lessons, vocabulary memorization software, and of course, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. And you can try that for free right now with our three part masterclass. Just click up here or down in the description below to learn more about that and sign up. We're looking forward to meeting you there. Top. I'm sorry, so. Mr. Stark, but do you honestly expect us to believe that that was a bodyguard in a suit that conveniently appeared despite the fact that if something is convenient, it's suitable for your purposes and needs and causes the least difficulty. Example, I love the gym that's across town, but I come to this one because it's more convenient for me as it's just two blocks away from my house. It would be more convenient if I could pick up the children at four. But this is what the friends do. They show up. Not when convenient or easy, when hard. And you always make it hard. Another frequent use of this word, whether the adjective form convenient or the adverb form conveniently, is to refer to the part of a story that makes it hard to believe. All right, we all agreed not to tell her and to look for Dart, who you conveniently found. Are you suggesting that I'm lying? I'm saying you have a creepy little bond with him. Yeah, that was before he turned into a demogorgon. It is one thing to question the official story and another thing entirely to make wild accusations or insinuate that I'm uh, a superhero. To question something is to express doubts about the value or truth of something. Example, I trusted him and I never questioned what he told me. New studies question the use of drugs as an effective treatment to the illness. As we've seen before, wild is used as an emphasizer here, this time collocated with accusations. I never said you were a superhero. Didn't? Mm -mm. Well, good, because that would be outlandish and uh, fantastic. Outlandish means very strange or unusual, extremely different from what is normal or expected. Example, his story seems so outlandish. Those are outlandish clothes. This probably comes from the noun outlander, which is an uncommon alternative for foreigner. That is, someone who comes from another country. Hey, are you a Marvel fan? Then don't miss this lesson that we made with the Avengers after you finished this lesson. I, I, I'm just not the, the hero type. Clearly. Then, when we say that someone is a certain type, or the type of person to do something, we mean that a person has or seems to have a particular character. If we say that someone is not the type to cheat in a game, it means that you wouldn't expect of that person to be a cheater, for example. Here, Tony is using the word a bit differently though. He says he's not the hero type. Keeping the same example just mentioned, that would be like saying someone is not a cheating type. With this, uh laundry list of character defects, all the mistakes I've made, largely public. A laundry list is a way of saying a long list of things. Example, there's a whole laundry list of things to do. You've all received the official statement of what occurred at Stark Industries last night. There have been unconfirmed reports that a robotic prototype malfunctioned and cause damage to the arc reactor. Fortunately, a member of Tony Stark's personal... Iron team, Man, that's kind of catchy. It's got a nice ring to it. I mean, it's not technically accurate. This suit's a gold titanium alloy, but it's kind of evocative, the imagery, anyway. Here's your alibi. Okay. You were on your yacht. Yeah. We have port papers that put you in Avalon all night and sworn statements from 50 of your guests. See, I was thinking maybe we should say it was just, uh, just Pepper and me alone on the island. That's what happened. All right. Just read it word for word. There's nothing about staying here. That's being handled. He's on vacation. Small aircraft have such a poor safety record. But what about the whole cover story? It's a bodyguard? He's my body? I mean, is that, that's kind of flimsy, don't you think? This isn't my first rodeo, Mr. Stark. Just stick to the official statement and soon this will all be behind you. 
you know, if I were Iron Man, I'd have this girlfriend who knew my true identity. She'd be a wreck. She'd always be worrying that I was going to die. Yet sort of proud of the man I'd become. She'd be wildly conflicted, which would only make her more <clears throat> crazy about me. Tell me you never think. And now Mr. Stark has prepared a statement. He will not be taking any questions. Thank you. Uh, been a while since I was in front of you. I figure I'll stick to the cards this time. <laughs> <clears throat> There's been speculation that I was involved in the events that occurred, the freeway and the rooftop. I'm sorry, several... Mr. Stark, but do you honestly expect us to believe that that was a bodyguard in a suit that conveniently appeared, despite the fact that... You I know that it's how... confusing. It is one thing to question the official story and another thing entirely to make wild accusations or insinuate that I'm uh, a superhero. I so, never said so you're a superhero. Didn't? Mm -mm. Well, good, because that would be outlandish and... Uh... Fantastic. I, I, I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly with this uh, laundry list of character defects, all the mistakes I've made, largely public. Yeah, okay, yeah. The truth is, I am Iron Man. You're on a roll. Keep learning by checking out our free three-part masterclass this lesson with the Avengers or another lesson that I know you're gonna love. Now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Oh yeah.